there's a prelude, amen, for what is going to happen in the tribulation. Remember, whatever big event or big, big dispensation, amen, that's been prophetically proclaimed even by Scripture that's going to happen in this earth, there is always a prelude to it. Why? Because it's not just a sudden thing that happens. There is a build up of those things happening. And this, there is a great falling away. And I was just somewhat restless in my spirit last night because many in the body of Christ that attend church faithfully is going to be a part of that falling away. Hello, somebody. And God began to show me many of them is because many of many of them don't have the discipline. Somebody say discipline. The discipline to, to be disciplined in the word, to be disciplined in prayer, to be disciplined in worship. These foundational things. And all of a sudden it's going to come up and, and people are going to decide, I just can't do church no more. I can't do God no more. That's really what they're saying. Numerous and numerous of pastors are quitting, shutting down churches, shutting down their ministries, going back into the world. I even heard a story just last night. One pastor decided he's going to test God for a year. An evangelical pastor decided he's going to test God for one year. And he's been pastoring for years just to see if God is real. He said he wasn't going to read the Bible. Wasn't going to pray, wasn't going to worship, wasn't going to attend church for one year to test God, to see if he's real. At the end of the year, he decided God ain't real. How many of you know he wasn't saved? When you decide that God ain't real and you said you was a believer, you never was a believer. That's all that is. That's all that is. Because once you're born again, you're born. You can't take back the birth just like in the natural. You can't take back that birth. I don't care how much you don't like that parent. I don't care how much you don't like the church you go to or whatever, with your life, your name. Guess what? You've been born, and you can't reverse it. And it's the same way with being born again. Once you're born again, that's it. See, people don't grab hold of that. They think, yeah, you can walk away from God. You can renounce it. Amen. But when you truly been born again, hello, somebody. See, they got a thing now where kids can divorce their parents. <laughs> somebody say perversion. But guess what? When you are born of God, all you want is God. I don't care how deceptive the enemy comes. See, your spirit man is sealed by the Holy Ghost. I'm trying to help somebody here because people are waffling. If you're waffling like that and you're not sure of your salvation, guess what? You better come back. Amen. You better take another dip, not just in the water. Come on, somebody, but by the Spirit of God. You should be sure. You can be sure. And watch this. This is what's happening right now because we play in church. We don't want a real relationship with God. And so I'm so disturbed in my spirit because I know it's people all over this nation and people right here in our city that we've gone to church with, some of us all our life. And they right there at the edge of turning back. Why? Because they've always lived on the edge. Always lived on the edge. How can I be sure? How can I how can I be assured, glory to God, that I'm not one of the one that's gonna fall away? You can be sure just by making sure that you still growing in the things of God. Hello, somebody. Any relationship that should be growth. Because if it's not a growth, guess what? Y'all start Growing apart, as we say. But if you assure yourself, you take your time and be diligent in the Word. I'm not talking about just religiously reading the Word. Hello, somebody. The Word is not a textbook. Amen. It's a covenant. And if you'll be sure 
that you will read and study and meditate. Somebody say read, study, and meditate. Most people don't even read the Bible. That's no study or meditate it. That's the only way the Word can get in you. You first got to get in the Word. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we got some work to do. Amen. I said we got some work to do. We got some praying to do. We got some praying to do. Hello, y'all quiet in this house. Hallelujah. Come on. We got to know that God has called us not to be churchgoers. He's called us to raise up kings and priests. Hallelujah. And so in order for me to do that, I got to raise my mindset up. I can't worry about my bills from day to day, living from check, paycheck to paycheck every day, and that's all that's on my mind. Hello, somebody. We serve a God that's bigger than that. Hallelujah. And one of the reasons the people fall away is because they become selfish. Selfishness is a danger. Amen. You should become becoming more selfless as it relates to the things of God. Amen. Oh, y'all quiet on me. Y'all, y'all need to, I gave y'all a whole break, whole week of rest. Y'all still resting on me? Hello, somebody. Y'all boys should be stronger now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all gonna mess up. Pops ain't gonna give y'all no more breaks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's get in the Word today. Let's go ahead and get in the Word. Amen. Let me see if I, can get, if I can get some amens out of y'all. Hallelujah this morning. Y'all got any amens in y'all? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go to Genesis chapter 12. Hallelujah. We've been studying and teaching on a promise is a promise. Can you say amen? Somebody say a promise is a promise. Hallelujah. Amen. This is part six. A promise is a promise. Amen. Call to inherit a blessing. Somebody say I'm called to inherit a blessing. Amen. We touched on that last time we were together. We are, we are called. We discovered that we are called to inherit a blessing. That's a calling to inherit the blessing. Why is it a calling to inherit a blessing? Because Adam lost it. Amen. When Adam lost it, he lost it all. Amen. When Adam experienced his fall, he lost it all. Somebody say he lost it all. Amen. He lost it all, not only for himself, he lost it all for you and I. Because you and I were in Adam when he lost it all. Hello, somebody. Amen. But God, through his redemptive plan, thank somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. He put a calling on our lives. He predestined us, all the, those who would accept Jesus Christ. Amen. We have been initiated and com- this call has been commended unto us. Can you say amen? Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3 says, Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. He says, I will make of thee a great nation. Somebody say a great nation. Think about it. Great nations are supposed to come out of you. Just like it came out of Adam, that, gener- that generational blessing must continue through you. Amen. Whether it's a, a natural birth, through natural birth, or through your spiritual children, amen, that you should birth. Every one of us, amen, should have, our, should have children following after us, whether spiritual, amen, or through the natural birthing process. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. He says, I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee, and in thee, somebody say, in me, in thee, in me shall all families of the earth be blessed. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Hallelujah. Somebody say, a promise is a promise. Amen. Glory to God. I don't care what things look like. Amen. There's a promise, glory to God, that will annihilate that problem. Hallelujah. Galatians 3, 13, 14 says, Christ, the anointed one and his anointing, hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Notice the word redeemed is in past tense. 
Amen. You've been bought back already. It's already a done deal. You've been redeemed. You've been rescued from the curse of the law. Amen. What was the curse? It was a threefold curse. Amen. Sickness and disease, poverty and lack, separation from God of sin. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You've been redeemed from all of that. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm free. Hallelujah. That's right. You are free. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. How? Being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. How? Through Jesus Christ. Why? That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Again, the last time we were together, we saw something. We saw that we were called to inherit a blessing. Somebody say amen. Watch this. But we also saw that it's important if we don't esteem that call, we can find ourselves being profane. Somebody say profane. Profane simply means not esteeming things that are dedicated or consecrated, things that are holy, things that are important. Amen. We saw in uh, in Hebrews where uh, Esau sold his birthright from one morsel of meat. Uh, some some people call it was a a, a pot or a bowl of beans or, or, or lentils or whatever the case may be. He sold his birthright from for something that was carnal and fleshly. He sold his birthright. Watch this for a temporary situation. He made a permanent decision in a temporary situation. How many times we do that? We get mad. We get angry. We get frustrated. We get despondent. We just give up. We throw in the towel. We lose our restraint because of the situation and just say, forget it. And it was just a temporary situation. It was something that you could have overcame. It was something that you could have endured. It was something that you could have outlasted. But instead, because you allowed the situation to get to you, rather than you overcoming the situation, you made a permanent decision in a temporary place. 